My brother was asked in a prompt the other day what he wanted to be when he grew up. I saw the kids working in his mind to have the greatest answer that ever was. My brother looked at me and he said, you know what, Yanni? I want to be alive. It's sad that already my brother believes that his life will come to an end well before it even started. No doctor, no football player, no firefighter, just alive. He just wants to be able to breathe the air that people play with so effortlessly. He definitely doesn't want to be the next, dang, I just saw him about a week ago type boy. I looked at him and I said, you know what? You will be alive. Just sit and do your homework for now, but I wonder if he can decode the Morse code in my voice and dang, I wonder if you'll be alive too. But we all know that these questions come along too often in young African-American men's lives. We all know before they're put on the pedestal of success, they're put on the pedestal of failure. A young African-American men have been taught from the beginning of time. First, they hung on a noose. Now they hang on the streets with the same intentions. Dang, I wonder if I'll be alive tomorrow too. On the count of three, ready? One, two, three. Ready, set, action. Hey. <laughs> What I hope to get out of this experience was, I guess, just being able to teach um, teens who, I guess, w was in my position, so to speak. Um, being in D.C. and being a student at Georgetown, sometimes we get lost in just that, being students of Georgetown, not understanding that in the city of D.C., people actually live here. And even further than that, looking at inequality, looking at access, looking, looking at opportunities, and if you travel outside of the, the world of Georgetown into the neighborhoods of Southeast DC, you see disparity um, at its forefront. However, um, what I've gotten from this project is, is the teens and, and those who, who live in Southeast and those who, who are Southeast define Southeast the way they want to define it. We're in this class, Social Justice Documentary, and we're all student filmmakers. And we have this assignment to actually go out into the city and make a, a documentary on an issue of our, of our choice. And uh, when given this assignment, I immediately thought back to Keystone and seeing you guys with those cameras. Um, I think it would be cool if we can actually have the semester to where you put a, uh, your own project together uh, and you film your own project. And we would more so be here to support you in actually putting that together. Here at the Boys and Girls Club, the Teen Tech Center, they have Mr. LaVar. Uh, for me, Mother LaVar was Mr. Jeremiah. Um, and it was someone who was always there, um, who exposed me to different realms of study, who took me to different places, who let me see that the world for me was a lot bigger in Pascagoula, Mississippi. And LaVar, his hands on, and he does it. Uh, here in Southeast Washington, D.C., uh, we have uh, more than 30, 35 young people uh, that come to our Best Buy Teen Tech Center every single day. Uh, this place is a place of safe haven and refuge for teenagers who are looking uh, for, I think, solace and safety from a world and a community that too often uh, tells them that they have to fit into a mold. And my role is many wrapped into one. I'm part teacher, I'm part social worker, I'm part nurse, I'm part doctor, I'm part listener, uh, I'm part bus driver, I'm part trip planner, uh, I'm part college advisor, tutor, um, big brother, uh, and in a lot of cases, part surrogate dad. And I embrace that role a lot, uh, and it's an honor. This is my 16th year in youth development, and I absolutely love what I do. So what you're gonna do today is put together your storyline to go forward with your film. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, you wanna interview athletes in order to get their perspectives. You gotta actually figure out how many athletes you wanna interview, where you wanna interview them, and who are the athletes you're targeting. Um, and again, I can help you. I have some friends that play basketball and football at Georgetown. Maybe we could organize something. Okay, yes, I have my whole idea mapped out. So right. it's it's going to be based off people's per like um what do people think that their purposes are in life? So it's going to open up with the word purpose, and then I'm going to define it, and then I'm going to come in, and I'm going to have uh four adults, four teens, four women, four men, um and ask them what's your purpose in life, and end with a quote, and formulate us some lines of poetry because that's what I do. So I got it all together. I'm ready.
So. Hey. Yeah, you can move this down a little bit if you want. So he's on the last side. You about to do it. Yeah, you can about to do it. Look at her. She said hello. Hey, trying to tell him basketball court too. Oh, if you bought it, yeah, I get a bucket. Okay, just just a bucket. So tell him when you're ready. It's only it's only a bucket. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, wait. Just ask the question, what's my purpose in life? And I'm living it. <laughs> God bless. Thank you. Awesome. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay, so the question is, what is your purpose in life? <laughs> yeah. What are you here for? What are you on the earth for? Doing what's right. Doing what's right? That's good. Anything else? <laughs> Most of them don't appreciate it. They don't appreciate the cherry. <laughs> nope, that's pretty much all. All right, <laughs> thank you. I think my purpose is um, getting to know what my roots are. I think my purpose in life is making some like the difference of someone else's life. That's okay. it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> now. My purpose in life is to touch and save lives. That you are powerful and purposeful. You do what you do, what you were born to do and have been trained to do. We all have the responsibility to do what we were put on earth to do and to do it well. And if it gets hard, just fight harder. You have to do what you have to believe and do what no one else can do. Remember to replace your cans with cans because you can do it. And it takes you to find your purpose. 